everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is Bustari Imoliayo I am a Nigerian registered nurse and midwife I am also a United Kingdom registered nurse on this channel I talk about nursing and healthcare and in today's video I am going to be talking about urinary catheterization I'll be talking about the indications for urinary catheterization the different forms of urinary catheterization as also the sizes and types of urinary catheters and also the complications that may occur if you're using a urinary catheter now simply put urinary catheterization is a procedure that involves the insertion of a flexible tube which is called the catheter through the urethra into the bladder to drain urine Please understand that there are other modes of catheterization. You have cardiac catheters and so many nasal catheters and all of that. But specifically for this video, we're talking about urinary catheterization. So you just don't make the mistake of defining catheterization as the one to drain urine when there are other means, measures or modes of catheterization. Now that we understand what catheterization is, let's talk about the indications. The first indication we'll be talking about is urinary retention. This is when a person is not able to pass urine or they are not able to empty their bladder and it may be caused by obstruction, nerve problems or post-operative conditions where the patient has been under analgesia, probably the person is still asleep, drowsy and they cannot pass urine, then you can insert a catheter to drain the urine. Another indication is measuring of urine output. If you want to monitor the fluid a patient is taking in and passing out urinary catheterization is a very good way to monitor this because you'll be able to um, measure the quantity of urine each time you're draining the catheter bag and the person will also be able to keep a record of the amount of fluid you are taking it that way you can calculate it at the end of every day to know if there's a positive or negative fluid balance urinary catheters are also passed for patients going to surgery if they are going to have a surgical procedure so that you can continuously drain the bladder while the surgery is going on and even after the surgery is done and especially when you're doing surgeries around the pelvic or urology um, system you always have to pass a urinary catheter patients who are incontinent of urine can also be um, giving urinary catheterization as a management measure because when a patient is incontinent of urine that is they cannot control how they pass urine they continuously wet their skin their skin becomes moist and it may start to break down causing excoriation causing so many things around that area so passing a urinary catheter would help them to continuously drain you in and keep that area dry especially when the patient is bedridden they cannot get out of bed on their own and an incontinence pad may not be the best option next is for diagnostic purposes you may need a sterile urine sample for a test or for even radiographic studies and the best way to get a sterile sample of urine is via the urinary catheter you know that one has in come in contact with the external environment and it is like in an enclosed space now let's move on to the various forms of urinary catheterization that we have first type is the intermittent catheters and from the word intermittent it means something that goes on and off on and off like within a short time this is a form of urinary catheterization where you insert the catheter temporarily to drain urine and then you remove it later. Next is indwelling catheters which you leave in place for like an extended period of time and then you inflate the balloon to keep the catheter in place. I think this is what we more commonly see on the words. You insert the catheter, you inflate the balloon, you leave it there, connect it to a euro meter or a euro bag and you continuously drain that urine and keep a record of it this one is very very popular and common next are suprapubic catheters from the word suprapubic above the pubis this one is inserted through an incision in the abdomen in the pubic area directly into the bladder so it doesn't go through the urethra like other forms of urinary catheterization and this is done probably when urethral catheterization is not possible or it is not the best option for that patient 
Next, we have external catheters, commonly called condom catheters, and this is usually used for male patients. They wear it over the penis like a condom and they strap the bag to their thigh. This one is very comfortable to go around with and they can wear it underneath their clothes and there's no need to like expose it and people don't even get to know that they're even wearing a urinary catheter. Moving on to the sizes of urinary catheters. The size is actually very important because the lumen comes in different diameters. That shows that some are smaller than others, while some are like wider than the others. And the size of the catheter will determine who or when to use that particular catheter. So the sizes are measured in French FR units, or you can say size. So there's size 8 to 10 for pediatrics, 12 to 14 for adolescents and young adults. You have 14 to 16 for like adult females, 16 to 18 for males, 20 to 24 for managing hematuria or clothes. Like that one is not very commonly used. And you have to also take into consideration that some catheters will be written, like it will be written on the package that these catheters are for female only. And you are not supposed to use those catheters for male because if you do, it means that they are not long enough to get into the bladder or close to the area where the catheter is supposed to be. In the male remember the urethra of the male is longer than that of the female before we move on to the complications of urinary casterization i need you to know that nursing with light limited now has loads of resources for nigerian nursing students or nursing students all over africa that they can use all for free to prepare for the exams our audio lectures are available on the website all you need to do is to go to www.nursingwithlight.com and head over to the nursing lectures tabs and you can start listening to audio lectures anywhere anytime you can also stay on this youtube channel for more video tutorials there are also free practice tests on the website from the quiz tab where you can practice towards your exams and there are also some materials that you can purchase on the ebook section that are specifically targeted to helping you pass your council examinations now let's talk about the different complications that may arise from urinary catheterization the first and most common complication that occurs with the use of catheters are urinary tract infection. And this is because when you're inserting the catheter or if the catheter stays in the urinary tract for too long, there might be ascension or introduction of bacteria to the urinary tract. And a good way to prevent this is maintaining strict aseptic technique during the insertion, ensure that you care for the catheter properly and ensure that um, if the catheter is no longer needed you take it out so minimize the duration to prevent infections another thing that can occur are bladder spasms that can be caused by irritation from the catheter management of this is administering medications to reduce spasms and ensure that the catheter is correctly placed another thing that could happen is urethral trauma this could be probably because the insertion procedure was very rough or the person who has the catheter on them were moving up and down causing dragging and traction through the urethra and the prevention is to gently and carefully insert the catheter ensure that you secure the catheter properly and also tell the patient who has the catheter on to be careful with how they move around or pull on the urinary catheter Another thing that could also occur is blockage. There could be blood clots, sediments or kinks in the catheter and that will cause it to block. So it, the management plan is to regularly flush the catheter if it's necessary. Then also continue to monitor the tube connected to the catheter for any sediments or kinks. There could also be leakages around the catheter which may be because the catheter size is too small or maybe there are bladder spasms. And the risk with this is that the patient especially if you're someone that has been incontinent and you're trying to not get the skin to break down because of moisture or because it's constantly wet it means that the aim will not be achieved and there could be breakdown of the skin so the solution is to assess the catheter properly ensure you're using the right size and if it's not the appropriate size try to replace the urinary catheter with the correct one so overall, to care and maintain a good urinary catheter, you have to regularly monitor the catheter, check for draining, kinks, obstruction, leaks. Ensure that you clean the catheter sides with soap and water daily, like when they have their bath or their bed bath, so you don't have 
microorganisms dead clogging around that area ensure that the empty catheter bag when it is too thoughtful don't wait till it is filled to the brim to the point that the urine is now flowing back then you always maintain um input and output chart and also encourage the patient to take in enough fluid except when they are on fluid restriction i hope now you understand all about urinary catheterization to see more of my videos click on this playlist here and i'll see you in the next one bye